Hello, I'm Tang from Theodore Sweden. I'm going to present our work, which has been done in a collaboration between the Umeå University and Theodore in Sweden and the UM University in Germany. Our work is regarding the load diffusion modeling for distributed application in Fox Edge computing environments. This work has been done under the RECAP project an European S2020 project, which study the resource management for large-scale distributed applications in edge computing. The main focus of the project is the problem of auto-scaling and system remediation based on workload modeling and predictions. When working in the project, we found that there's a limitation in workload data collection in such large-scale distributed applications, as evident through the use case of content delivery network of British Telecom, the BDCDN, and the use case of NFV-based network communication services of Theodore. In the BDCDN, it is impossible and infeasible to collect the workload data at every node or locations in the network infrastructure to serve our task of workload modeling that requires much data collected from as many as possible network nodes. Note that a node here could refer to a physical node or a physical location in the network or a component of a distributed application. So there comes a demand of workload generation or a so-called workload propagation model that can answer the research questions. How the change of workload at a certain node is propagated to or influence its neighboring nodes. In this work, we consider different kinds of network topologies or different application models. Specifically, we consider the unstructured network topologies, for example, the peer-to-peer -peer overlay network or the ad hoc network, and the high hierarchical network that can be observed in the CDNs or the core broadband networks. The figure of the hierarchical network models is a representative of the BT core network that consists of four main tiers, the inner core, the outer core, metro, and tier one, in which the inner core is the endpoint connecting the BT core network to the internet, and the tier one is considered as the, the point where most of the end users are connected to. This network model is will be used will be used throughout this presentation as an example hierarchical network. Here's the agenda of my presentation. First, I will introduce the problem formulation. Next is our solution followed by some experiments. And finally, I will present a discussion on the extension of our solution, some takeaways, and our future works. As mentioned before, it is really necessary to understand the behaviors of large-scale distributed applications together with their workload behaviors in order to serve workload and application characterization and modeling. This requires a workload propagation model besides the application model. Much effort has been made for a workload analysis, modeling, and prediction, but to our best of knowledge. There's no study focusing on the workload propagation within the distributed applications. In addition, the big data analytics is widely applied in various applications or use cases, which highly demand publicly available datasets. Especially in our recap project, it is required a high volume of time series datasets of different types, for example, the web traffic data and resource utilization data of different applications. So here comes a demand of synthetic workload generation. And again, even though there are numerous studies on workload generation, but 
none of them were tackling the problem of workload generation for large-scale distributed applications. So we complement the literature with our research on this problem. The problem is formulated as given workload me measurements at a limit limited subset of nodes, it is required to generate supplementary workloads for the entire application. An example can be seen from the figure over here where we have the workload data collected from three nodes, I1, I2, and I3, and we need to generate the workloads for any other nodes where needed. Our solutions include the application models together with workload propagation models and different workload diffusion algorithms for different kinds of network topologies as presented before. And the final target of this work is to construct a framework with all the models and algorithms integrated. So here are three non hierarchical workload diffusion algorithms. The network model figure show an example network topologies together with some key properties like the population or the number of users associated to a node, the bandwidth capacity of a link, and the coordinates of each node that are used to calculate the distance of the two certain nodes. The key idea of the population diffusion is that a node with largest population will receive higher load from a source node in workload propagation. The flowchart here shows the procedure of the two other diffusion algorithms, the location-based and the bandwidth-based. Each algorithm runs in iterations that will stop when reaching a conversion state. In the location-based algorithms, a node closer to the source will receive higher load, while the, in the bandwidth-based algorithms, the workload distributed on a link is proportional to the link's bandwidth capacity. Regarding the hierarchical workload diffusion, the first algorithm is the hierarchy-based. Some of the key assumptions include, first, we adopt the network models of the BD-CDN that's presented before, and uh, to serve user requests, workload will propagate from inner core nodes down to tier one nodes. Workload from an upper node or a parent is distributed down to its children based on the combination of the link capacity and the size of the population to serve. Workload measurement should exist at some nodes. The flowchart here shows the algorithm, how the algorithm works under four main phases. First, the population is aggregated from tier 1 up to the inner core nodes. This aggregation process is also to determine the ratio to distribute workload from the parent to, uh, to, to its children for later use. The second is the backward workload extrapolation that aggregates the workload from any other nodes up to the inner core nodes. Aggregated workload of a child node is distributed to its parents based on link capacities. As sold in the figures, workload from S here will be distributed to A and B based on the link. This is the link of the link between S and A and B. And then workload from A will be distributed to B and C, and so on. Note that workload at a pattern node, for example, node B, is calculated based on, based on both 
the Lord received from his children and also the extrapolated workload portion from others using the distribution ratios calculated in the first phase. Next is the inner core workload extrapolations. With the measurement and the extrapolated workloads of neighboring nodes, workload of an inner core node is extrapolated based on the weighted sum model. The last phase is the workload propagation phase that distributes the workload from inner core nodes down to tier 1 nodes using the above distributed uh, distribution ratios. The network routing based diffusion assumes workload will propagate from a set of service nodes or actually just a subset of inner core nodes as shown in the flowchart. The algorithms also consist of four phases in which phase 2 and of the user aggregation and phase 4 of the workload propagation are the same as those of the above hierarchy-based diffusion. The routing path discovery in phase 1 is simply implemented using Dijkstra algorithms to find shorted routing paths. The backward workload extrapolation phase serves this serves the serve the same purpose as that of the hierarchy based but using the predetermined routing path instead of using all the links connecting the lower node to the upper ones like uh, the, un the, uh, the the above algorithms this is a summary of our proposed algorithms people who are interested in our proposal can review it later and also can refer to the paper for a complete description of the algorithms. So I will not go through this in detail for now. We have carried out some experiments to verify our proposed algorithms. In the experiments, we adopt the network model that have been developed, developed in our recap project as illustrated in the figures. The model is actually a small scale of the BT core network and based on the census population data of the city of Umeå in Sweden. The workload data sets are given as time series by BT that are collected from three inner core nodes or a cache server of the production CDN system of BT. Data represents the traffic served by the cache servers. The first experimental scenario is to demonstrate basic features of the algorithms. In this experiment, workload measurements are associated to three inner core nodes, I1, I2, and I3. The figures show how the data sets look like. The data is anonymized and normalized for security purpose. The normalized data is named proportional data traffic, which is used as the label of the y axis of the charts. Here are just some selected results we have got from the experiment. The first chart show a comparisons of data generated by higher hierarchy based and the network routing based diffusion algorithm for node M3. It shows that the traffic received by hierarchy based is higher than that of network routing based algorithms. This is because with the hierarchy based M3 had to serve not T31, while with the network routing based, T31 is served 
by only node O2 and nothing comes from M3. The three charts at the bottom show the results obtained by the three non-hierarchical diffusion algorithms. The population of node T20 22 is much larger than that of T21, and hence the higher traffic. And for the location base, it shows that traffic at two nodes T21 and 22 are not that different. Traffic at 21 is a little higher in most of the time because it is a little closer to the influencers. Those are, they are nodes M2 and M3. With the same influencer, influencers M2 and M3, and M3, and the same link capacity, traffic at two nodes, T21 and T22 here, are exactly the same as so in uh, the bandwidth based diffusion. The figures over here. This scenario 2 is to perform a comprehensive verification of the diffusion algorithms with full features and traffic is propagated in different flows and different direction. Workload measurements are associated to three random nodes. In this case, they are M2, M9, and T62. For bandwidth based diffusion, because the traffic of nodes are evolved iteratively over symmetric links, traffic of all nodes are at almost the same scale. Patterns of nodes, pattern of traffic at nodes uh, M9 and and T91 are nearly matched because traffic of T91 is influenced directly by, by M9, as we can see in the, the network topology figures here. While the traffic pattern of node O2 is different from them because of its different sets of influencer. For the hierarchy based diffusion, while traffic at not at not I2 is influenced influenced by not M9 and T City T City 2 through two nodes O4 and O5 traffic at I1 is also influenced by these nodes O4 and O5 and also influenced by node O2. Hence a little high traffic received at I1. Traffic at O5 is much higher than that of O4 because O5 is influenced by both M9 and T62, while O4 is influenced by only T62. Because of the traffic aggregation at the inner core service node, a traffic, the traffic at I1 and I2 are always higher than those of O4 and O5. Our validation is to make a comparison between the original data, namely ground truth, and the rediffused data for M2, M9, and T62. In particular, data obtained from the scenario 2 experiment is used to rediffuse data for these nodes. The validation is carried out based on the entropy, average entropy, and 
the correlation, the correlation of data sets. The entropy measurements show a slight increase for the bandwidth base and a little larger increase for the hierarchy base. This is because the, of the irrigation function in the hierarchy base, thereby the noise accumulation. This combined with the approximate entropy, as shown in the, the, the table, shows that while data increase in noisiness, it retains the properties in regard to forecast, forecastability of the time series. Note that the goal here is not to create identical time series, but rather to create data similar in its statistical property. The chart also shows the high correlation between the ground true and the rediffused data. Here are some discussions on our proposal. The main target of the proposed algorithms is to enable workload generation using workload propagation models. In order to support distributed application profiling and the workload modeling and predictions. In, in addition, we are also investigating a promising extension of our proposal, which helps to mitigate data privacy concerns in dissemination of data traces collected from sensitive data applications. Let's consider the use case of CDN system with the, top, with the topologies shown in the figures. With our proposal, we can apply data pri privacy filters on just a subset of data trace. So for example, in this case, include uh, the nodes I1, I2, and I3, and then just publish the, this subset of data together with generated data for other nodes, or even with just with such a subset of data, people can use our framework to generate the rest of the, the data sets. This helps saving the cost of privacy, data privacy processing as well as lower the possibility of sensitive information disclosures. And finally, here are some conclusions from my presentation, which are considered as some takeaways. The first one is the, the formulations of the workload generation for large scale distributed application and five algorithm to, for algorithms to address this problem based on workload propagation model, which are applicable to different types of network topologies or different application models. Next, we discuss uh, a further applications of the proposal to deal with data privacy in data dissemination for sensitive data applications. And lastly, are some, some of our future work. In fact, one of the ongoing research directions of theater research is to develop uh, the models and algorithms for telco service function chains and IoT application. And based on that, to standardize all the models and algorithms to accomplish our workload generation framework. And here are some references used in my presentation. Thank you.